Welcome back to the Snowpoint Cast. Uh, today we've got a special guest, the 2015 TCG Masters Champion, Jacob Van Wigner. Uh, welcome to the show, dude. How you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me. Word. Um, okay, so let's get right into it. So um, let's start talking about teams. I know you're on uh, a fair amount of Pokemon teams uh, throughout the years. You're on uh, Hovercats and Team Honor Roll. Um, what were some of the, like more defining uh like skills and aspects of pokemon that you learned from the team experience that you think like it, how did teams help you out as a player um teams well the biggest thing was just like having people to grind games against mm-hmm. um because honestly like that's probably the best way to learn a matchup is to play like just like what the deck that you want to play at an event versus you know each individual deck like 20 to 50 times or however much you have time for. Right. Um, and also, specifically, to that sense, um, we had Chase Maloney and Trevor Reed on the team during that year. And, I mean, throughout the years mm-hmm. before and after that as well. But um, I was like, I need to sleep. And they are both robots. So <laughs> they were able to just, they, they just, like, grinded games of, like, Blastoise versus Seismitoad. Yeah, man. I, I, I roomed with Chase. Night. They did that yeah. all night. And they're like, if you ever go off, you're going to win. Like, you'll, you'll just... <laughs> because he didn't have uh, Headringer. Mm. And that that was honestly, yeah. like, one of the... If he played Headringer, like, throughout that. Yeah. It, well, I mean, going up in games right now, it probably wouldn't have mattered too much. But, mm. I, but just, like, in general, that, that was, like, a make or break card versus the deck mm-hmm. uh, sorry and what the fact that he didn't play sign lab sorry yeah I, you're talking about finals right yeah yeah okay yeah that makes finals sense or, finals are just mace sorry yeah yeah no no that totally makes sense um going back to chase and trevor so trevor's my roommate i love trevor yeah. trevor's a homie um oh yeah sure and like watching them test i've stayed overnight with them at a few tournaments and like watching them test is insane because they'll <laughs> they'll literally just like They'll play a game and they'll be like, this deck sucks. And then they'll play a different game and they'll be like, this deck is amazing, but we're actually just going to change it. Like I was at the provincials before Toad Bats was even really a thing back when like yeah. Toad Slurp Off was a thing. Uh-huh. And like that's the, the provincials that TJ won with Kyogre. Were you there for that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So at that provincials, how they like, they were like, let's play Toad. And they were like, let's play Toad Puff. This is good. But what if we just beat the mirror? And then they played Toad Bats, hopped in with like a 60 that they literally played two games with. And then Chase got top four the next day with the. Yeah, that the, was the, like the, when the Nectric Seismitoad was good too. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same, same kind of era. And like. I think, I think I played that at like the last states of that year. Yeah, yeah. That deck was definitely good as well. Uh huh. Um, okay, so moving on a little bit. Um, I met you at Portland Regs, which was the first regionals that I ever met. Uh, you were playing Toad Slurpuff at that event. You actually won that event with Toad Slurpuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Do you think, like, that you had a really good run at that tournament that year, and then that was the same year that you won Worlds. Um, do you think that like right. overall luck played a pretty big factor that year? Or do you th- were you like putting in a lot of hours? Like what? What do you think was like a how big of a factor yeah. did luck play? Um. Well, I mean, just looking at the two decks, like for so that regionals was Toad Slurp Buff, and then Worlds was LDO Blastoise. Yeah. Like those are two of the biggest like high roll decks that exist. In <laughs> yes. In their various meta games, right? Um, before that, uh, the ban or whatever they did, or they banned Trump Card. Before. I'm I'm mixing up. Yeah. I'm mixing up. Yeah. Yeah, they banned Trump Card. They like early rotated. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so luck in those two specific tournaments definitely played a big factor, but mm. also I think that both ended up just being good meta game calls mm. because I played against one Garbodor deck throughout all of Worlds. Wow. And it was um and it like and he like he drew past. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, what like, you want against Garbodor. He went Trubbish like past to me going second. Wow. And then I turned one to him and then <laughs> he like he set up and then I lost and then game three he trubbish passed again. So it's just like Did you hit the turn one Archie so, still? Yeah both both the uh, the games that literally I literally free. Turn one. That's so funny. Um and so, like, yeah, luck is, like, I got, I, I, that's obviously one of the luckiest tournaments that I think I've had just because of the game, the deck that I was playing right. and the fact that I, like, 
didn't play a legitimate Seismitoad deck until finals either. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, actually, that's not true. I played against uh, Josh uh, Markings. Uh, Seismitoad Hippowdon, and I got oh, absolutely destroyed. Was so bad. The Evo Lock Hippowdon, or no, Evo EX Lock one, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Interesting card. Yeah, that's that, was really, that was really good. I really like that deck, and I appreciate mm. it. I, that's like one of the things I love. Did so he like evolve, that. or did he use maxis to get it out? No, he evolved it. Yeah. He evolved. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, that's ain't got time for maxis, bro. <laughs> I'll just. It's a stage uh, one, was, dude. I'll just. It was get like it. a slow deck. It was a slow deck. Mm. It was like I'm gonna, I'm gonna quaking punch you, and then I'm gonna hip out on you, and you're just not gonna be able to do anything about it. Did it play like control stuff too, like hammers or? Uh, I believe it played flare grunts. I don't, and mm. maybe zero sick if that was out. I don't remember right. if it had actual hammers. Uh, he was probably anticipating playing a lot of like seismic variants. Right, right. Uh, in which that one like is better because of the out on. Yeah, you just win against Toad when you find it. Yeah, you just wall him. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I played against that, and then I played against Dustin Zimmerman's metal deck. Mm. And he played one Mewtwo and one Seismitoad. Maybe two of one of those cards, I don't remember. But he, but like that was the second time that I played Seismitoad. Mm. And that was like in day two. And then in finals. That's so interesting. So Seismitoad is a really interesting part of like the meta that you played in. Because it was very different like in the time that you okay. played it. And like over the years it developed. Like for example, Getsis. Getsis came out like after you won Worlds with the card. Yeah. Everyone was like, we have to play this card in our deck because Archie is just like gets, so gets good. Us, gets us in Hex both came out at the same time. Like, and it was just like the set yeah. that was legal after. No, no, Gets us was legal for Worlds. People could have played Gets us for Worlds. Oh, was it? Oh, yeah, so okay. that, Gets us is from... Oh, uh, that's a plasma card. Yeah, it's a plasma card. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I was also going to ask you, like, obviously uh, Archie's, it wasn't like secret. People knew that it was uh, a thing, but they didn't really know the full power of it. I don't think uh-huh. um, if a card like gets this, like would have been like if people well, first, if they knew that Archie's was as powerful as it was, um, do you think like cards like gets this would have came in to shake things up? And how do you think that would have like impacted the meta? Yeah, I think most of the control decks probably would have played one of right. um, the decks that like have that need space for their own stuff. Probably wouldn't have played it. Like maybe the right two decks, like, I saw a handful of Raichu decks around that did pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, those probably all would have played one. I, any of the compressor decks would have played one, I'm sure. Yeah. And you could still Jirachi for it, too, right? Yeah. Mm. Do you think that would have, like, changed? Like, how do you think that would have changed what people played? I mean, obviously, Toadbats and Archies um, would be... I, I don't think there would have been any of... Like, A, if uh, there was at least a, you know say 10% of the field was playing gets this like a I wouldn't have, like none of the archies would have gone through like oh, as right. far as they did mm-hmm. I don't I don't think anyway I think they would have hit them at some point and it's like, too oppressive would almost certainly play more than more than two of them not in addition to any potential bad matchups that they play right. against you know mm-hmm. um and B I don't think any of the night march decks would have done as well oh yeah that's very true as well yeah mm. <clears throat> which you know maybe just night march players played against us and you know went off anyway who's really to say but that's i just think that those two the two combo decks and then you know the stuff that and the other like compressor decks probably wouldn't have done as well yeah i feel like a combo deck it's like night march or um archies where you're just trying to hit your combo it, if you do miss that on the Getsis, especially when quaking punch is a thing you just it's like not even really a valid deck anymore if people know about Getsis. right mm. Okay, um, so I'm going to talk to you about something that happened at 2018 Worlds. Uh, so I don't know if you remember this conversation, but I ever heard you, you were play- playing beer pong, you were talking with a European player, uh, and you were talking about, you guys were arguing about something, and he's like, I, I just remember he said something, and he was like, man, that you totally should have lost that game, and then Chris Brown comes up, and he's like, you think he doesn't know that, man? He lived it! Um, what <laughs> what, uh, what happened in that game that he was talking about? Well, A, I don't remember what game he was talking about (laughs) okay it could have it could have been one of like five different games to be honest and that just goes back to like how how much i realized like how lucky i got during that tournament just Mm. because like i played a a uh starboard or deck that drew past twice right i have a feeling the game specifically because you said it was a european player talking to me about (laughs) it um and I apologize to the European player because I'm sure they're lovely, but I can't remember who that was. Um, I have a feeling the game they're talking about was my top eight match versus um, 
Martin? Martin? Mm. Martin Yanos? Is that it? Maybe. Yeah, I don't know, man. You you played it. Because I know because top four was Merlin and then there's Martin, and I'm just worried I'm like getting them confused. Mixed up. But mm. um one of them. A- anyway. Great, great guy. Uh it was a really honestly it was a really fun game. He's super nice to play against. Um but there was a turn and Dustin told me about this after the fact. Um where I and I realized that I did it too, and so I was just like he was reaffirming that I like realized that I messed up. Right. Was I had a loan? What did I have out? I had I had something active, and I had an execute in my discard pile, and I didn't bench it. Oh. And so then the next turn, I like survived. Thankfully, you know this yeah. is versus Night March. <laughs> like I had something. Pa- I had like <sighs> Mewtwo pass or something terrible, yeah. like the worst thing you could have against Night March. Right. And then survive, and remember, okay, I need to put the execute on my bench now. I put, <laughs> I put the energy on it, and it was like ready to go. Um, yeah. I can get knocked out here. It's okay now. Right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like not worried about that. So funny. And I have a feeling that is what they're referring to because it looked like he just did not draw very well in that right. game. Yeah. Um. But. Like I said, he could also be talking about, you know, finals. He could be talking about uh, the Garbodor game. He could be talking right. about, um, like, I played against, uh, I played against Danny with uh, Rizzing Genesect. Um, I think that was that same tournament. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the same tournament. Mm. Um, and and I beat him. Um, it's so interesting because, like, when I you're playing against the Groudon, oh. and I beat the Groudon. Oof. What did he start like Groudon and not have a wob up or what? Um, I think he missed Floatstone or some switching effect because I remember my game plan was to, he like he made the mistake of benching the Groudon before he had any way to like take it out of active. Mm. And if, maybe that's not really a mistake. Maybe he just like needed to do that. I don't know. I don't really play Groudon that much. I've only ever played it. Like, Who plays Groudon? But but um. I Lysandered it, and it got stuck there enough, mm-hmm. long enough for me to have another turn in Blastoise, and that happened a yeah. couple of times. Yeah. Um, okay, so I'm going to track back a little bit. Um, so you talked about something really interesting that you said was, you talked about Dustin um, like telling you about something <clears throat> something that you misplayed in a game. I think that's a really good mentality to have, and I think, yeah. um, like especially being open to, you know, you're a world champion, you're one of the best TCG players cemented in history, to to be humble in that and saying, listen, I messed up during this game. I very well could have lost this game and then not, you know, finish on the path that I finished. Um, right. What what would you recommend to like newer players in terms of like, uh, I, that's something that's really hard when you're getting into the game is like coming to the point where you're like, I messed up. I made a mistake. Um, what's one of your, well, like what's your advice to get past that hurdle? Um, the hurdle of like, not realizing your mistakes or what well the 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 hurdle is more like a mentality thing where where players are like oh it's it's my prizes or whatever um i try really hard to not have an ego in most Mm. aspects of my life especially because of my job like the job that i have right now as soon as i have like an ego then i'm just like making a scene Mm. Uh, what do you do just for everyone listening what is it? What do you do? Just so there's some context. Uh, I, I do security at a hospital. Mm. So I'm like dealing with the public a lot, dealing with, you know, mental health and things like that. And if I ever am like getting an ego in that and like letting my ego take over in a situation when I'm like out with somebody, mm. then it's either going to get me or somebody else hurt or make me look like an ass. And so I just start trying not to do that. And then also just like have that throughout my life in general Mm. um in relation to pokemon uh just like being willing to acknowledge like if you made it like think about turns where you maybe the game stopped being good for you which is easier said than done if you aren't able to like completely remember everything that happened throughout your game but um that is also just something that comes with time and like gain um and reps you know yeah the more games you play <clears throat> yeah the more the more time you put in playing games and practicing and thinking about mistakes that you made and what you can 
do what you could have done instead in that turn, you know, and then just like right. try and bury him on the next couple of turns ahead with whoever you were playing against and mm-hmm. just like figure out, oh, okay, well, if you had done that, then I would have done that. And then maybe you figure out that you did make the right play, but they just had a counter anyway, mm-hmm. or. So just like being aware and conscious of like boards and plays even more. That, that takes a lot of right. awareness really to, to understand every right. mistake that you make. Yeah. And, um, and just being willing to admit that it was your fault. Right. You yeah. know, that's, and, that's a, something that is just difficult to do in general. Yeah. Especially when you know, you made the mistake as the player. Like if it costs you a yeah. game, it's tough to be like, I'm an idiot and I misplayed that. And it's way easier to brush it off and say, Hey, well, you know, I didn't draw the card that I needed when it was a, w- I should have hit blank. Right. right? Exactly. Like, it, or instead of putting yourself into the position of having to hit that card, you know, set yourself up for a long game. Right. And just be super, mm-hmm. super, uh, resource, like resource efficient. Right. You know? Yeah. And like, just, I think that's something that like a lot of newer players don't, I think they understand it, but they don't understand it. Understand the depth of it is like resource management is Pokemon. Like when you're managing your resources conservatively and you know, your outs like that, that's when you're playing like good Pokemon. I don't think that a lot of newer players really understand that. Like they understand that they have to, you know, be conscious of plays and like know what tools they have for whatever matchups, but there's a very different, uh, like understanding between base level. I know what my resources are and like knowing how to, you know, thin to make sure you hit the resources that you need when you need them and just stuff like that. Right. There's a, there's a lot of times where I found myself like remembering, Oh, right. I don't have, you know, four juniper in this deck anymore. I have to, mm. and now you're, you're constantly thinking about other ways that you can get some value out of out of the cards that you're playing without like wasting other resources mm. or without having to use one resource that you think you're going to need later on, like that, that third and fourth Juniper or that, you right. know, that VS seeker. You can just play the end in your hand instead of like VS seeker for the Lysander or something like that. Or like journey. I guess that's not super relevant now because neither of those yeah. are illegal. But. <laughs> I mean, or like Junipering away a Juniper and an end instead of ending kind of thing. Just like, yeah, exactly. Mm. Just trying to like, well, I could dig for seven, fresh cards instead of shuffling these yeah. two in but i think you'd just like shuffle the two in yeah of course for i mean it depends on the board right if your opponent played themselves oh, yeah, down totally, to a totally. one card hand yeah of course so honestly we could talk about resource management for a long time it's a very like yeah, there's you know there's hours so, so much here. um but I, i'm gonna start to wrap it up a little bit there's something that i ask uh, everyone that comes on the show um so if you could give one piece of advice um when it comes to being the best like no one ever was because you got there uh what uh what would your piece of advice be (laughs) what would my piece of advice be yeah for for Um, players like just looking to better themselves just okay uh honestly it's just to try and put yourself out there and get into more like find more people to test with because a and i'm saying like not maybe not necessarily just your friends that you play with at your shop Mm. or um, just your couple of friends that you know from the store and like a couple of their friends or whatever, like utilize all of the social media that we have now, Mm. um, which is something that even wasn't really as prevalent. Like back when I was like fully playing, you know, 20, 2016 was probably Mm -hmm. like my last full year. Um, So even just like four years ago, there's so much more going on in social media now. And, and, uh, in terms of just gathering information and um, reaching out to people to um, try and, you know, hook up online with and play, like bust out 20 games, you know, of a matchup. Right. right. Cause I mean, um, more games it, played and the more you're like seeing other people as well, the more your perspectives are getting open. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're think you're getting more than just like your friend group's thoughts on your deck, you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. Um, and maybe that's just like a basic, social skill or something <laughs> but also it's really good in pokemon i when i um first started getting into playing seriously like you know i went to battle roads and whatever in 2015 or 2014 no even earlier than that this is like 2009 2010 mm. um but it wasn't really until like so i started playing in probably 2009 i didn't really start trying to branch out to people that weren't in oregon and washington until like 2011 Mm. maybe um maybe i'm 
not remembering that quite right, but it was like at that point when I um, found myself like winning more locals or not necessarily winning more locals, but just like doing better at locals. Um, and it was in 2012. What was Zek- What was the Zekiel's year? Uh, Zekiel's was like 2012 like the- fall. Okay. Yeah. So, um, well then maybe it was spring of 2013 was when I started like finding myself like, winning Oregon States, getting second mm-hmm. at Washington States. Um, and it was because of like reaching out to more people and talking about more decks and like, yeah, I played Zekiel's like, it's not really, you know, innovative or anything, but I mean, but that's what yeah, you're that, saying that, is that like, was, but that was the first time that I had like found myself like doing well. Cause I was like, Oh yeah, I got to play like three collector and like this and that. <laughs> and they're like, no, just play four dual ball. Oh yeah, and then you played, is the play. And then played four dual bong, mm-hmm. one Oregon. Double heads for two dynamos, pretty good. Yeah, and then, you know, me too. Your me too battles also, you yeah. know, gave away a lot of games and mm-hmm. won won me a lot of games. But yeah, and that's that's a really interesting mm-hmm. point to make, especially in like today's meta, right? Like if you played Zekiel's or a deck on the same like tier of Zekiel's at like a regionals today. There's no right. way like you're maybe yeah. maybe if you get really lucky, but like back in the day in 2012, like you could have just rolled up with Zekiel's and be like, I'm going to hit a bunch mm-hmm. of heads on dual balls and do well. Right. Mm. Did you see that guy who posted his Zekiel's cube? He put there's a Zekiel's he, cube. He has an eels cube. He posted what? on Twitter. I cannot remember the person's name, but I oh will search gosh. for the rest of the evening to try and find it. I would because, love that. And if you do find I it, I'll drop it really in the description. Cool. I don't normally like cubes a whole lot just because mm-hmm. like i like i'm just like spending most of the time reading the cards yeah. and well um, that's i'm just not as big of a fan of doing that mm-hmm. I, I don't like reading is what i'm trying to say <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah this guy had like it was like a 12 12 of eels and then like all these other various like lightning wow. attackers that's crazy and you could have you could have one of another energy type so you could put like oh. one fighting or something if you wanted to put and there, there's like two Tracheons in the bot in the cube Funky. and stuff like that. Do you like know that. how many cards were in the cube? I don't remember. Mm. Uh it was probably for like a four person cube. Mm-hmm. Not like a big huge one, like right. you know, like what um Puka has and stuff like that. Puka but, and Dustin. Dustin does a cube too. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, word. Um I think that's just about it. Uh, did did you want to give any like shout outs or drop your Twitter or? Uh, yeah, my Twitter and Instagram are both just at Jacob Van Wagner. Uh, first name, last name, no spaces or char- special characters or anything like that. Um, shout out to the Hover Boys. Shout out to the Honor Boys. Hover game. You know? Oh yeah. Rest in peace. There's so many like hover cats that like used to because especially now there's so many like associated teams that like the hover cats right. and honor rolls like you never see mike newman roll up anymore rest in peace mike newman the homie yeah dustin's still he's, around he's, he's busy he's, he's he's busy with his band yeah he's doing music stuff he's he's yeah he's teaching again too which is pretty cool oh that is sick yeah i mean pursuing yeah. passions bro that's what it's about yeah and being able to like pull off doing both of those things at any given yes. time is insane. oh my gosh yeah it's like so hard but good for yeah, him yeah it takes so it takes so, so much like character and energy you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, uh, thank you so much for coming on, and uh, thank yeah, sure. you, thank you to the viewer uh, for tuning in. This has been the interview with Jacob Van Wagner. Uh, thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.